Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm making a reverse dyed geode shirt. I've washed the shirt in the washing machine and it's damp with just plain water. I'm starting off with a royal blue shirt, which is a Gildan Ultra Cotton t-shirt. I also have the shirt turned inside out. I'm going to start by using a piece of chalk and just kind of free-forming on an area where I'd like the center of my geode to be. It's just to kind of give myself a reference as I'm tying the shirt for where I want the center of the geode to be. Then I'm going to grab this area and lift the shirt up off of the table and slide my hand all the way down to the very bottom of the shirt and start tying from there. I'm using sinew to tie my lines because sinew is wax coated and whenever I tie a line with sinew and pull it really tight, it's going to form a waterproof barrier which won't allow my color remover underneath this area and it also won't allow my dye underneath this area. So these areas that I'm tying with the sinew are going to remain this royal blue color. So that I don't end up with a shirt that looks more like a bullseye, I'm going to lift the shirt up off of the table periodically and kind of give it a good shake. I also don't want to tie lines that are too perfect. In other words, if the shirt underneath is a little bit wrinkled and folded, that's actually a good thing. It's going to make the geode look a little bit more natural. I also want to vary the distance between each of the sinew lines. I don't want to make them all the same distance apart from each other. The more random you can make a geode look, the more natural it actually looks. As I get closer to the center of my geode, I'm going to go ahead and rough the shirt up a little bit more. I'm going to push part of the end down into the center of the geode and make sure I really get this end looking less than perfect. That's going to make for a more interesting center on my geode. Then before I use the out white bright color remover, I'm going to go ahead and set the shirt aside for a couple days and let it dry out completely. That's going to help me get a little bit more of the color removed from the center of the geode. So I'm going to use out white bright laundry whitener to go ahead and remove the color from the shirts. I've placed the shirts into a container and I have my container outside and I'm wearing my respirator for this entire process. This geode shirt is the bright blue shirt at the very top of the container. I'm beginning by sprinkling out white bright over the top of all the shirts. Then I'm going to pour boiling hot water over the top of the shirts. To speed up the process a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and add a little additional out white bright to the top. As you can see, it almost immediately starts to remove the color from the shirts. And as you can tell, 
This bright blue shirt has now turned a bright orange color. I left the shirts for about 10 minutes in the out white bright, then I took them to my utility sink and I rinsed them in cold water. I left them tied and put them in my washing machine and I washed them using a warm water cycle and a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent. And after the shirts were washed, then I put them into my soda ash solution and I let them soak for about 20 to 30 minutes and wrung them out of my Panda spin dryer. As you can see from this photo, one of the shirts has turned my soda ash solution a blue color. This is why I suggest that you do not use your main soda ash solution to soak shirts that have either been reverse dyed or previously tie dyed. After I wrung the shirts out my panda spin dryer, I set them aside and I let them dry out completely before I began applying dye to any of the shirts. For this shirt, I've chosen a variety of blues and grays. So if you remember, whenever I reverse dyed the shirt, it turned a bright orange color. But after the shirt was washed and went through the soda ash solution, it's now just more of a pale blue than it began. It started out as kind of a royal blue, and now it's kind of like a faded blue jean color. I'm going to ice dye the shirt, but I'm going to make myself an ice barrier using some silicone cake molds. I have a link down below in the description for these cake molds. Then to hold them up next to the shirt, I'm going to attach some wooden clothespins to my metal rack. I'm going to use quite a few different dye colors, so I've placed them down below in the description. I'm beginning with Cerulean Blue from Custom Colors, followed by Blue Gray from Dharma, Charcoal Gray from Dharma, Lunar Blue from Custom Colors, Pewter from Dharma, Azure Blue from Dharma, Gunmetal Gray from Dharma, Steel Blue Gray from Custom Colors, Cobalt Blue from Dharma, Silver Lining from Dharma, and Mom Jeans from Dharma. Mom Jeans was a seasonal Dharma color, so I don't think it's available anymore. I initially applied the dye in this order, and then I went ahead and just randomly applied the dye to the remaining sections. Now I'm going to add an additional sprinkle of soda ash over the top of the die and add on a layer of ice. Then over the top of the ice, I'm going to place a little bit of Wedgwood Blue from Dharma. That's just going to kind of fill in some empty spaces and give a little bit of added dimension to the shirt. I allowed the first layer of ice to melt and since there was a little bit of undissolved dye left sitting on top of the shirt, I went ahead and applied a second layer of ice. 
I let the shirt process for probably about two or three days after the second layer of ice melted. That's not necessary, but I would suggest that you allow the shirt to process at least 24 hours after your second layer of ice melts. Okay, so as you can see, it looks like the dye has saturated through both sides of the shirt really well. At least it looks that way from the outside, but let's go ahead and rinse it to see what it looks like inside. I'm going to start rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. I'm going to gradually warm the water up to hot and continue rinsing to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. I'm also going to untie the shirt and continue rinsing until the water is almost clear. Then I'm going to put the shirt into my washing machine and wash it using a hot water cycle and a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent. Then after the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I really like this shirt. I think it turned out looking really pretty. I was a little bit concerned about some of the lighter grays, whether or not they would show up on the blue shirt because the shirt did end up kind of that faded blue jean color, but I'm really happy with it. I like all the different variations and shades of blues and grays added into the shirt. I also like the center geode. I think that cerulean blue really pops right in the center of that geode. Then I think the heavy color variations from the charcoal gray up close to the center of the geode look really cool. Some of that could be coming off of the blue gray as well. I also like the fact that the geode lines are the bright royal blue. That's a little bit unexpected and I think it looks kind of cool on this shirt. I also really like the design on the back of the shirt. You know, whenever I do a single geode shirt and I grab just that portion, it makes an unusual design on the back of the shirt. And I like the design that this shirt has with the darker gray color right in the back and it kind of has formed its own little geode action happening back there and I think that looks cool. I ended up with the geode center right up on the shoulder of the shirt and then just down from that there are a couple other little what look like centers of the geode too. It's always fun when you end up with a surprise design in the shirt. So I really like this shirt. I think it turned out looking really unusual and very different than just a geode on a normal white shirt. But what do you guys think? Drop me a comment down below and let me know. And I'd also appreciate it if you'd like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.